Hey, real quick before we get into the video, I just wanted to share a productivity hack that I've been messing around with for the past week or so, and it's designed to help me use this a little bit less than I already do. Like many of you out there, I'm sure, I am super addicted to my phone to the point where I'll pick it up even if I have a few free seconds just to flip through some apps. So I've found a way to help me reduce the amount of time that I do that on my phone, and I wanted to show you, so let's check it out. So basically, as you can see here, quite simply, all I've done is I've taken all of my apps and I've put them into these two folders here on the home page on my phone. The reason I put them into two folders is because uh, I couldn't fit them into one. But what this is forcing me to do is it's preventing me from uh, just kind of mindlessly browsing through all of my apps in an attempt to try to find something to keep me occupied. Instead, if I wanna find an app that I wanna use, I have to basically put in a little bit more effort. So I either have to swipe down like this and do a search for it. Let's say if I wanna search for Instagram and I can tab it from there, or I can do this deal where I look through the apps that I had previously open. What the fuck? But in both cases though, it forces me to put in a little bit more effort to try to find the app that I'm looking for, and I'm finding that it's helping me to keep my screen time down. Oh, and I also turned off the app suggestions, you know, when you swipe to the right and you get all these little widget things, it doesn't suggest apps for me anymore, so again, that's another way to prevent me from just quickly getting into the apps that I use all the time. But so far, so good. It seems to be keeping my screen time down, and I'm enjoying it, and if you have any additional productivity hacks for how I can use this thing a little bit less, leave a comment for me down below. And with that said, let's get on with the video. What's up everybody, Ryan Hafey with Hafey Digital here back at you with another recreation video. If you haven't seen my last one, I recreated a traffic shot from Brandon Lee's uh, Soul Wave video. Go check it out, I'll leave a description in the link I'll leave a link in the description below as well as up here. Go check that out and then come back and see me because today we are going to be recreating the time lapse effect from a video called Multiverse, which I found over on Vimeo. Vimeo. It's by Hiroshi Kondo STNW. Hiroshi Kondo. Anyway. So I don't wanna to give too much of the video away because it contains all these different variations of this one particular time-lapse effect. But basically, uh, it involves a time-lapse effect where it sort of focuses on one central subject area and then shows them kind of moving through. It's it's hard to explain, but you can kind of see what's happening here. And it's, it's a cool time-lapse effect that I've never seen before. And there was all these comments on the video saying, wow, that's so cool, I don't know how, I had no idea how you did that. And that to me is a challenge. I wanted to figure out how to do it. So that's what I did. In order to recreate this effect, obviously I had to start by getting some time-lapse footage. Luckily for me, I had a work trip planned for Brooklyn, New York and there's all sorts of people and vehicles moving in all directions at all times, so I knew that I could get some kind of cool time-lapse footage there, and I did. I went to the Brooklyn Bridge where I captured uh, some tourists walking uh, to and fro. And as far as the footage goes, I knew I wanted to shoot it in 4K because if you watch the multiverse video, you may have noticed in some of the scenes that there's some slight panning motions or some slight zooming, basically just some additional motion beyond just the subjects in the scenes themselves. So I knew that shooting in 4K would allow me to edit it in a 1080p timeline and incorporate some sort of post-production panning and zoom and that type of thing. And like I said earlier, I needed to find a high traffic area. The Brooklyn Bridge was perfect for that. There were all sorts of tourists walking up and down the bridge, so that worked out well. And also, I wanted to make sure that I filmed the time-lapse footage with manual focus, and that's going to prevent any kind of focus hunting that can make the background especially kind of go in and out of focus, makes the time-lapse just look a lot more clean uh, when you're editing it together. So I made my way to the bridge, set up the camera, let it record for a while, and that's step one. After that, we just need to move on to step two, which is getting the footage into Premiere and doing a little bit of setup to make the editing process a little bit easier. Now for starters, I made sure to put the clip into a 4K timeline that matches the settings of the footage itself. From here, I need to create a couple of guides that are gonna make it easier for me to position the people in the frame as they move across in order to get that sort of time frame. Now from here, I need to create a couple of guides that are gonna help me to position people in the frame. And to do that, for starters, I picked one subject that was basically walked from one side of the frame to the other in kind of a straight line that I felt others 
in the footage would follow as well. So I decided to use this girl here in the white shirt because she kind of walked directly in a straight line from the right side of the frame to the left. She was kind of of average height. She was in an average position on the bridge that I thought would match up well with other people walking down the same path. So I took a single frame of her when she's on the right side of the frame and I took another single frame of her when she was more towards the left side of the frame and basically kind of lined them up, one with a little bit less opacity and just made a new title that uh, features a red line that follows the top of her head across the frame. So this red line is kind of like my baseline. I wanna make sure that the people who are walking across the frame who are gonna be part of this effect, uh, that their heads are going to be in line with that red line as they walk across. But I'm also gonna need an additional guy to help me sort of create that movement from right to left across the frame because I don't want the effect to just be static. I want it to appear as though the effect is moving across the frame as the time lapse goes on. To do this, I used the Premiere Pro Guides feature. Basically, I just dragged a guideline out from the left side of the frame and positioned it just to the right of where I wanted my starting point to be. So now that I've got my guide set up, I have my starting position ready to go. This is where things get a little bit tedious. So basically what I had to do once the subject was lined up with their head kind of right at the intersection of that sort of diagonal line and the vertical guideline, I would cut the clip from there and then I would move that guideline 10 units to the left. I don't know exactly what measurement it is, if it's pixels, I'm not sure. Anyway, I just used the, the, the little, the numeric value there and I moved it 10 to the left. And from there I would play the clip on and wait for another person's head to come in and also intersect that guide area so that it matches the horizontal and vertical axis there if that makes any sense at all. And by the way, the reason that this is so tedious is because each person that shows up in the effect only takes up one frame. So you have to get the person in position, cut it, move the guideline, play the clip forward, and repeat this process over and over and over until either your clip is the desired length or until you run out of footage. And that's exactly what I did. I just kept going through that process over and over again until I used up the entire five minute time lapse clip that I had taken. And I will tell you now that five minutes was definitely not long enough to, uh, to create this effect in full. In fact, I would say that if you wanted to recreate this effect on your own and, and actually have a lot of usable footage, you would probably want to aim for anywhere from like 20 to 30 minutes of time lapse footage Either that or you want to make sure that you are getting a time lapse of some very heavily populated and trafficked area. On the day that I went to the Brooklyn Bridge, there were periods of time where there were a lot of people walking by the camera and then there would be stretches of period and then there would be stretches of time when no one was walking across the frame, in which case I had to cut all that footage out because it was unusable. But regardless of all of that, I was able to recreate the effect. Just unfortunately, it wasn't quite as long as I would have liked it to be. And here's what that effect looks like without any sort of motion or color grading added. Perfect, so now the hard work is done. So the next step for me was to add a quick color grade using an adjustment layer in that same sequence. From there, I created a new sequence, which was a 1080p sequence, and into that, I dragged that 4K sequence. And now with this 4K sequence inside this 1080 sequence, it allows me to create some of that motion I had mentioned earlier. So I zoomed the clip in a little bit. I created a subtle pan from left to right. I then nested that sequence down and added a fake handheld motion effect to that clip so that it looks like I was filming it handheld. Just kind of gives it a little bit of extra realism, I guess. After that, I did a couple more fine tuning and tweaking and moved a couple of clips around. And this is the final version of what I came up with. So in the end, the clip wasn't exactly as long as I would have liked it to be, but I still had fun with it. And if you know of any other videos out there that have some cool effects that you'd like me to try to recreate, I would love for you to leave a comment and a link. 
down below and uh, you never know, maybe I'll recreate it in another video. And with that, I will call this video done. Please hit that like button if you enjoyed this video and hit the subscribe button if you are not subscribed already and we will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.